This episode is titled The Quartz Mountains and we're actually hunting Aldad sheep in the Quartz Mountains of Oklahoma. Who would have ever thought there were Aldad sheep in Oklahoma? I certainly didn't. A buddy of mine, Andy Steffes, said he had a spot down there in the Quartz Mountains that are loaded with Aldad sheep. Back in the day, some of the ranchers had bought a couple ewes and some rams and dumped them in, and in the mountains on their property as a 4-H project. They became very proliferant in that area, and now all these little rock outcroppings, which are known as the Quartz Mountains down in southern Oklahoma, are home to some of these really cool Aldad sheep. And I can't wait to get down there to see what it's like for myself. Aldad sheep, or commonly called Barbary sheep, are just a real interesting looking animal. The term that I'd always heard was a poor man's sheep hunt. To be looking at these sheep, obviously they're built differently, but they're still sheep. And their horns kind of go back and just come down. And there's something really cool about them and their shaps. They call them shaps. They've got long hair on their legs and their neck, and they're a very unique animal. And I could honestly see myself wanting to chase these sheep every single year. On this particular hunt, I'm shooting the Browning Hell's Canyon 6.5 Creedmoor. It's an awesome gun. Again, my whole goal with the camera is to get you guys or the viewers into a position where you feel like you're right there with me. I feel like that's lost when it comes to long range hunting. My passion is sharing that experience with you. And so for this particular reason, the 6.5 is gonna be the right recipe for this hunt and that's what I'm packing. First time putting my eyes on these mountains, it was not what I was expecting. I guess I should have Googled it. But if you can imagine just boulders piled on top of boulders for 600 to 1,000 foot elevation change, which sounds kind of crazy, but it's true. I mean, some of these places are just so full of these giant boulders and it's a lot of rock hopping, but you watch the sheep and you can tell it's the perfect environment for them. They play around on the rocks just like you see the bighorn sheep in the state parks. I mean, it's the same thing. They're bouncing around. It's one of those deals where the bottom ground is fairly fertile soil, so there's a lot of farm ground and farming activity in the bottoms. And then these rock outcroppings, the locals said were really no good for anything. They couldn't graze them for cattle. It's just nothing but rocks and stuff that sticks and pokes you. Well, it's a perfect environment for sheep. And when I first got there, I thought, man, this reminds me a lot of my desert sheep hunt down in Sonora, Mexico. It's not only the perfect environment for sheep, but it's the perfect environment for rattlesnakes. So from the bottom, the best way to hunt this country is to just break out the glass. And we wanted to start picking these mountains apart and seeing if we could find a sheep that we wanted to go after. Well, after a little bit, we found the ram that we liked, and when we got to the top, the way that the ground laid, we could not push in any closer to this ram without potentially blowing him out. The best scenario was to sit in a spot, be patient, keep our eyes on him, and when he got up, we should have a chance. Little did we know that when this ram did stand up, he was gonna walk straight away from us, leaving us with no opportunity. We tried to close the distance, we couldn't even pick him up again. And that's just how it goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Well, day one comes to a close. Like I've always said, it's so much fun hunting new country, new animals, in places you never thought you'd end up. So day two is here, and the plan now is, again, try to find a good ram that we want to go after and then see if we can make a play on them. After glassing this other set of mountains, the opposite side of the valley where we were at on day one, Andy happened to pick up a bunch of sheep, a band of sheep on the face that we could see. And so the plan was, is let's slip around to the west. Let's try to come up and get on either the same level with them or maybe a little bit higher and see if we can't get into a spot because there's a lot of sheep in there. We're only seeing bits and pieces of this band of sheep. It's not like we're seeing all of them. And, and there's so much activity in there that we feel like we do need to get to a better vantage point. You never know, there might be a shooter in there that we just can't see from where we're at. After we get in there and we're kind of closing the distance, Andy's like, hey, you know what, that, ram's, that ram looks really good. 
and it was a ram that we hadn't been able to see from down below. So the strategy is working. We're getting to a spot where we can see more sheep. Now we've got a shooter ram in front of us and the plan now is, is to crawl up into a spot where we can get a nice rest on the rocks. We've got about 100 to 150 yards shot across this little spot to where the sheep are. And if we can get to that spot without getting picked off, we should have a great opportunity. As we crawl up to the rock, Mike and I get into position. I feel really good, I've got a solid rest, and now we're just waiting for the sheep to give us an open lane towards the ram that we wanna shoot and making sure that there's nothing else around him. There's a lot of rock, and if we get past through, we don't want that shot ricocheting, so to speak, or hitting other, other sheep in that area. So it's one of those deals where they're not going anywhere. We just gotta be patient and let the shot kind of present itself. Ready? He's done. Pretty amazing. I mean, the plan worked like a charm. Got into the spot. And sometimes I really truly believe that things happen for a reason. The sheep cleared and gave us the shot we were looking for. One shot, the ram was down. And I've got my first outdad sheep in none other than Southern Oklahoma in the Quartz Mountains. And I can't wait to go get my hands on him. Dang. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Look at, look at where he banged his horns up coming down into them rocks. But I love how dark the horns get when they start getting some age on him, yeah. He's heavy bugger, isn't he? Andy, thank you so much, man. You know, I used to go down into Colorado into the mountains and take pictures and film some of the bighorn sheep banging heads down there. And when you're in that environment and you hear that sound of sheep hitting heads and banging horns together, um, you never forget it. And now all of a sudden I'm in Oklahoma in this set of mountains and these outdad sheep are doing the exact same thing and that's where my mind took me. That's what it's all about for me. It's about just being there in the moment, living for that experience, and then living for the places that it takes you once you're in that moment. Well, if you didn't know there were Dad sheep down in the Quartz Mountains in Southern Oklahoma, now you do. If you like this episode of Beyond That, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and please ring that bell for more notifications.